Hi, in this video we're going to talk about parameterization. It's a database property or option available in Microsoft SQL Server. Parameterization has two values that you can configure, the first one being simple and the second one being forced. Before we can talk about what these options mean, it's a good idea to understand what SQL Server parameterization is about. I've seen people confuse parameterization with things like dynamic SQL, with SQL injection, with parameter sniffing, etc. Now, there are some similarities, but these are essentially different things. Now, parameterization basically allows SQL Server to identify hard-coded values in the body of the code and then substitute them with variables. By doing this, SQL Server is able to ensure that the body of the code remains the same regardless of what input values get passed. And as long as the body is the same, SQL Server can easily identify if this code has been used before and then simply reuse the plan that it generated the last time. If parameterization is not possible, SQL Server doesn't really have a way to identify if the code has been executed before because the where condition or the hard-coded value keeps changing from say 1 to 2 to 3 and each time generates a different execution plan. So I'm going to flush out the procedure cache. I'm going to go ahead and run this query to show you that there's nothing in the procedure cache. Uh, I'm going to run the uh, query to make sure that the database is currently using simple parameterization. Now, as you can see here, we've got one complex query, one simple query, one complex query, and one simple query. And they're essentially the same except for the hard-coded values. So you'll see here it's two, here it's one. I'm going to go ahead and run all these four queries now. And after I do that, if I look in the plan cache, you'll see that we've got one prepared query that was executed time two times, and we got two ad hoc queries. So let's confirm that. So you'll see here that I've got one row for prepared query. And this is my simple query, as you can see here, where the hard-coded value has been substituted by a variable. And therefore, this one plan has been used twice. On the other hand, for the ad hoc, you'll see that we've got two separate plans created. The first one is using uh, destination airport ID is one, as you can see here. And the second one is using destination airport ID is equal to two. So you'll see that when the value changed, the execution plan had to be recreated. And you can obviously understand why this is considered a bad thing for us because certain queries are exactly the same except for the input parameter keeps changing. And each time it changes, we end up storing uh, 900 ki uh, 90 kilobytes of uh, that execution plan in the memory. Now, assuming this was a query that was executed thousands of times, you can see how this one query might eat up all the RAM in the uh, server. So to overcome this issue, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, flush out the plan again, and we're going to make sure that it's actually empty. And we're going to use forced now. So again, I'm going to go ahead and run all the four of them side by side and you'll see now that we've actually got no more ad hoc queries we've only got prepared queries and the prepared queries have been executed four times and by prepared query what you'll see here is we've just got two rows one prepared query for the simple execution plan and one prepared query for the complex execution plan so you will see in this case this guy continues just like how he was before and over here you'll see that we've got at the rate zero, int at the rate one, int to substitute the hard-coded values I passed in previously. The advantage we get now because we have enabled force parameterization is I can change these values to say three. And we will not have any more new execution plans being created in the database. So let's have a look here. You'll see we still have the same two rows and just the execution count keeps increasing. And this is a very efficient and 
good way of storing uh, plans inside SQL Server because the first thing is we don't blow up the RAM by storing single use plans. And the second thing is because we're reusing the plans, the overall CPU overhead is significantly less because we are not doing as many compilations as we might. Now, personally, I prefer to use stored procedures for all the database queries. I am not a big fan of entity framework and uh, uh, code first approach basically. So typically in my case, when I do coding, I prefer to go ahead and just use stored procedures. And therefore I don't really have to worry about whether it's planned or forced, but a lot of places, especially for my clients, we see a lot of these N hibernate entity framework tools being used. And for them, it is critical that you change the execution, uh, the database option of parameterization from simple to forced. Otherwise, when they test the system, typically when they're doing load testing, you'll see that SQL, SQL Server easily runs out of CPU and memory. I've often seen the situation where people do load testing and they say the CPU is at 100%. And often the reason for that is because SQL Server spends an inordinate amount of time coming up with the execution plan. So that's pretty much it as far as simple and uh, forced parameterization is concerned. There is one caveat to the way that you use it, and that is the fact that SQL Server basically uses the first execution. So in this case, if you look here, I've created an integer value and therefore it's integer. But let's say I want to substitute this with something like 3a the second time around. In this scenario, a new plan will be created because obviously this execution plan is not going to be compatible with the data type int that we uh, saw before. So we can't obviously pass 3a into this. And therefore, there's something that you want to watch out for when you're using parameterization. Uh, I'm going to create another video later on where we'll show you how to use uh, plan hints and uh, force an execution plan uh, on these particular um, queries to specify when to use simple and when to use force. But uh, that's it for this video. I hope this makes it clear about what simple versus forced parameterization is and why you should definitely consider using it depending on what is the nature of the workload on your database. If it's primarily procedures, you can stick with simple. And if it's primarily uh, nHibernate or Entity Framework or any of those other ORM tools, then uh, you might wanna consider using force. Well, uh, that's it and thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video.